when we're sitting on that floor, we have to understand that there is something going on within our souls that sadness allows that Simcha doesn't. Sadness allows that we think for ourselves, I should be bigger in this moment versus a Simcha where I think to myself, let me just enjoy myself and not be bothered by this moment. Hi, everybody. This is Ari Ben Shushan. And this is Yassi Ben Shushan. And this is the Two Cents Podcast. Brought to you and powered by Meaningful Minute. Welcome to the Two Cents Podcast. Wow. Welcome back. How's it going, Right? Ari? So I was traveling a little bit, Yassi. I was, uh, I, I was on the derech, as they say. I was on the road and um, just... Uh, Baruch Hashem, you know, a little, little bit of travel with the family. And that being as it were, so we didn't get a chance to to record for a little bit. But now, Baruch Hashem, we are back. And and this is this is great. You know, it's great to sit here, uh, to be able to have this, to be able to have this connection. So we would like to is think. It great, is it great to sit? No, it, with I'm saying with each other. It's nice. So because... <laughs> we don't really get a chance to, you know, catch up. So that's it. Um, well, while while we're recording a season, little fun fact: while we're recording a season, um, Ari and I try speaking as little as possible um, outside of camera, so that we have what to talk about. Yeah, this is true. We we, we we're like, no, no, you know, we don't even send voice notes to each other. That's true. No, nope, none of that. Right. That's it. <laughs> so one second. Yes. Yeah. So I want to say thank but you. But today is the. Hold on, I want to say thank you to, no, to, to our sponsors. Um, thank you so much to, um, to Yad Lachem for giving us, uh, the ability to be able to have this, to be able to connect to, to Klyas Roll. So many people who really enjoy and appreciate uh, what it is that we're doing over here to try to maybe bring a little happiness, bring some Tyra. Some ashkafa, some direction in this like certain way that we do it. And uh, thank you so, so much to Yad Lachem for giving us uh, this terrific opportunity and Collars and Co. Um, you know, giving us this opportunity as well. Collars and Co. So, you know, Collars and Co. has really been giving me a great summer so far. Very, very comfortable. Very, very thankful. And so, Baruch Hashem, we are now back and we're going to be talking today about Tisha B'Av. Um, this is... Shabbat. This is the time of the year, Yasi, where people are just scrambling to know what to do. They, they don't, you know, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, I think we have somewhat of a directive. And people get involved by Sukkot, by Pesach. People are involved. They're in it. They're in it. You know, checking what kind of matzah they're getting, making sure that their sukkah is set up, Lulav, and they're in it. But when it comes to the three weeks, when it comes to Tish above, people like to stay on the bench. They're bench warmers. People like to like take a step back and say, look, I'm just going to wait for this whole craziness to pass. You know, this doesn't have to really do with me all that much. All right, I'll fast. Okay, you don't want me to listen to music. And there goes my meat and my wine. You know, okay, I- I'll stick to the basics, but I'm going to bench warm this one, meaning I'm just going to let somebody else, let the big rabbis right. who get involved, let them be involved in it. So I wanted us to talk about how we can actually be involved in it. Today's Tisha B'Av. And what is it, or around now, we don't know exactly when this is going to come out uh, to the world, but when is it that a person is able to get involved? How do they do that? That's really what I wanted to focus on today. Yeah, so I totally agree. And to play off of that idea that you were just saying, I think Tisha B'Av, the three weeks, it's one of the most fascinating times that we have uh, during the year. Now, first of all, the Ramchal brings down that the Jewish calendar within itself, and if anyone doesn't own, Ari, I mean, right? If anyone doesn't own a book of our heritage. No, it's weird. It's like, it's weird. what have you been doing till now? What? <laughs> I don't understand what you've been doing till now. No, you don't know everything that's going on. You don't. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been learning. I don't care how long you've been Jewish. As a matter of fact, if you've been from for as many years, the odds are your focus on on Chagim, on Yom Taivim, on Shabbosim, on times of the year, on fasts are all off. So we're going to try to uh, uh, set this, and it's become a little bit of a mission of mine around this time of year to set all this straight. So Ramchal brings down that the the Jewish calendar is the perfect self work calendar in out there. Um, I don't know how many there are, but 
out there. So what does that mean? We go through every range of emotion over the course of an entire year and we acknowledge and we do the healthiest thing we can do with any emotion, with any feeling. Um, we don't fight it. We don't um, hide it. We don't push it down. We actually sit in it. We sit in that feeling. Uh, uh, just taking examples, Sukkot is a certain amount of vulnerability, sitting with that. Uh, Pesach is a certain amount of freedom or imprisonment uh, and sitting with that, sitting there with that, no distractions, no anything, just sitting with those emotions. Tish above the three weeks, these are the times that we sit with loss and sadness and we sit and we allow it. And it is so uncomfortable. <laughs> it is so incredibly uncomfortable, but that's the point of it. The point of it is don't try to comfort yourself. Don't try to put on shoes. Don't try to do this. Don't try to do it. Don't try to eat. Don't try to do anything your way through it. Right. Hamavadi even says uh, uh, about smoking cigarettes on Tisha B'Av. Right. To it doesn't say that about any no. other, any other fast. I'm saying aside, aside from when it's uh, actually right. like a Yom Kippur, but, um, um, but a, a weekday fast like that, there's nothing like that. There's nothing wrong with that, but it takes away from our focus on that sadness and to be able for a person to be able to really encompass their whole lives. Cause really anything we're going through in life is because we don't have the base on Mikdash. So no matter what sadness you're bringing to the table, that's valid. That sadness is valid. And I remember in camps, we always used to use, you know, either the Holocaust or what's going on in Eretz Yisrael or whatever it is. And that's all valid. It's all valid to use because the focus isn't just that we don't have a base on Mikdash. The focus is, is that because we don't have a base on Mikdash, we don't have a lot of things that we used to have. But because we don't have a base on Mikdash, we're left in this very lost space. Have you ever feeling lost? It happened to me too, right? If you're ever feeling lost uh, uh, alone, all of this has to do with the base of Mekdash. All of this has to do with that. And uh, to take that time and sit during this time, and it's the only time of year, right? Uh, a very you know, so you, immature concept. Yeah, I, 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 I want to throw in by Yom HaZikaron. Uh, you know, Yom HaZikaron is the day of remembrance. And that comes around really right after mm. Pesach. And exactly what you're saying, that they had said to many great Rabbanim, uh, yeshivas should get involved in Yom HaZikaron, so they have remembrance. And the Rosh Hashiva's response was, what do you think Tisha B'Av and the three weeks are about? Meaning, right. we already have that set. You know, it's already there. Yeah, exactly. Right, 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 right. To reframe it, and, and again, it's nothing against the Yom HaZikaron. It's to reframe it and take away from that time, you're not tapping into the greatest potential of what you could that the Bari Island put for then, because these things aren't just random. It's not just random that Tisha B'Av is on Tisha B'Av, right? As a matter of fact, it's really bad timing. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's nice weather. Everyone's on vacation. It's like, it's bad timing. So, but it's not, because it's not random. For whatever reason, the Alamis or whatever, Alpi Kabbalah, that that time is set up, that the chef of that time is set up. You're going to be able to work through sadness, spiritually and emotionally, on a day like Tisha B'Av, greater than every other day. And it really is, from a psychological standpoint, it's so incredible that you're not the only one sitting on the floor. Everyone right. is on the floor. Everyone is sock for a for everyone is crying. You get to look around and realize I'm my loneliness is what separates me that I'm not actually alone. Everyone's alone. Everyone's lost. No one. You could be a billionaire in that shul with beautiful children, with great shaduchim, with great everything. And you're still on the floor. Everyone's on the floor for a reason. And the whole point is, is that Hashem is telling us, if you're not on the floor for a reason, you're not paying attention. There's a reason you're on that floor. We're not, we're not making up this sadness. There's a reason you're on that floor. Think about that reason. Go through that reason. Connect to me through that reason. That sadness is so important to acknowledge. It's so, because if we didn't have that day, we would do what the Umas um Asylum do, you know, the ones who aren't, you know, enlightened in this way do. And we'll go through years and years and years of just shoveling it aside, uh, drinking our pain away, whatever it is, shoving it down, never truly and absolutely connecting to the beauty of emotion that is sadness. Yeah. You know, I, I, I do want to point from there that you brought up this great idea. <clears throat> 
that um, we're all mm. in it together. Mm. I said idea and together so that they rhyme. Um, you know, th- this. Right. Th- you could have said pizza. Uh, well, no, we, we, we could have, but my agenda, nice, was to, was, was to go with that. <laughs> well done. Look, I get it. It's Tisha Bub, but we're not filming this on Tisha Bub, So it's not, it's just not possible to, to not, you know, throw a couple of curveballs. Um, you know, listen to this after hot size. <laughs> what am I supposed to tell you? Um, but <laughs> I, I, I I, okay, wait. Ari's saying that because we got a lot of hate one year because we did a thing on Tisha B'Av and we laughed. I'm sorry. That's going to happen. I hope for the rest of my life, my my Tafkid and my Avoida is to hold back from laughing so much yeah. oh, nice. or to hold back Simcha to make place for, for sadness. Yeah. So, I, I mean, but Yossi brought up a very, very good point, um, as shockingly as that is, which is that Yossi said, <laughs> and, and 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 the thing is like i'm saying is a joke just no because no no ari please talk about by another exactly right now what what I'm doing. About <laughs> no I, I know what you were going for <laughs> i was going for a right and i was starting it off with what you don't do i was showing everybody you know how to not wade into that water of non bain adam esque type things uh um, right. you know However easy. Yeah, it you know, been. they say Kamsa Bar Kamsa had a podcast. Uh, you know, that's how it started. <laughs> and uh okay, no. So <laughs> wouldn't that be a I mean that would be a, if, if they had a Kamsa Bar Kamsa podcast. A great name that's for a, a great podcast. name for a podcast. I'm Kamsa, I'm Bar Kamsa, and we're <laughs> I'm Bar Kamsa. <laughs> and we're really trying to make things better. <laughs> okay, okay. Not not uh so uh, I, I bring this up because Yossi was saying everybody is sitting on the floor together. And that's a Bein Adam L'chaveray moment over there. I, I I really do. I appreciate that because I appreciated just that picture that I had in my mind as Yossi said it of the 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 wealthy, the poor, the the tzaddikim, the ones who are not holding up being a tzaddik yet, whatever it may be. There is a beautiful fluidity of Klai Yisrael. Meaning, if the whole idea is that we're meant to be Ke'ish Echad, Balev Echad, if that's how it works, and that's what brings Mashiach ultimately. So you, we only, right, that's a very famous thing. We only see each other at weddings and funerals, right? That that's when people kind of get together. And if you're Simchas, right? Misha Nichnas, others, Marben Besimcha, but if Hashem is, I think, saying to us, if I don't see you all together by your simchas, if by the Adar time, I don't see a ke'eshechad belevechad, if everybody is separate by the simchas, oh, I'm not going to invite this one to my simcha or that one. And let's face it, this is how it all began. The story there of Bar Kamsa was by a simcha. And at the simcha, there wasn't an ishechad belevechad. At the simcha, there was a separation where the rich man who didn't want Bar Kamsa there threw him out. And if by the Simcha there wasn't unity, so Hashem said, okay, then there's one other place where Kla Yisrael has unity, and that's by funerals. And that's by sadness. And you know what? It's unfortunately much easier to sit down together and cry with people. You know, we're more forgiving when we see people that we may have disagreements with at funerals you know, is it's a sad, but it's a very yeah. strong thought. If I would see somebody who I have disagreements right now, and it's at a funeral, in my mind, I start to think, you know, I need to be bigger. Maybe I should make a connection to that guy. As opposed to if I would see that same guy at a wedding or at a simcha, I just, I hope I'm not sitting at his table. You know, I'm just, I'm just going to avoid him and just say mazel tov to somebody else. And if I can just avoid him long enough to dance with the chassan and get to my car, I'll be happy. There's something there that we need to learn when we're sitting on that floor. When we're sitting on that floor, we have to understand mm. that there is something going on within our souls that sadness allows that Simcha doesn't. Sadness allows that we think for ourselves, I should be bigger in this moment versus a Simcha where I think to myself, let me just enjoy myself and not be bothered by this moment. You know, that's, that's a pretty heavy right. thought. 
So when we're sitting there, Yasi was saying, you need to embrace this when you sit down. You need to think to yourself, what is it that I'm meant to be sitting down for? What am I sitting down for over here on the floor? And the answer is, you're sitting down because at this moment, it's easier for you to accept to connect, to accept that there are people that I may not like and people that I'm meant to go and make amends with. And at that moment, we're more accepting. When a person is by a Shiva house, unfortunately, and you see somebody sitting next to you by the Shiva that you may not have what to do with and you have disagreements with, it's much easier to turn to that person and say, ah, this hurts. This is sad. Like, yeah, yeah. And, you know, as opposed to by a simcha, we're like, mazel tov, mazel tov, you know, like a quick clip of a mazel tov and, and you move on. We need to learn in Beit HaMulchah right Now, I, I did want to explore for a moment, why is it that way? Yeah. So what do you think the psychology is? Yeah, see, you're the therapist over here. What do you think? No, but like just just in in human, uh, just psychology, um, physiology. Is physiology something about the physical? I, I don't know. I don't know. No. Uh, okay, herbology. Wrong one. There we go. Let's, let's get this yeah, there no, we go. Plants. Wrong one. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So, so just within whatever it is that makes the brain tick, he's a brain doctor. So let's um, <laughs> let's figure this out. Right. Yes. Why? So, Come here. So I just want to be. I I, I just want to be clear. Number one, yes, I'm not, say a he's not a therapist or a brain he's gonna say doctor. He's not a therapist. So let's just. <laughs> Because everyone knows I always start, I, I'm not a therapist and I'm not a brain doctor also, but yeah, th- there is something like that. And it's something I, we yeah, actually yeah, touched I'm upon sorry. on I, I, yeah, a different I, episode that we recorded. I'm sorry. Can you imagine, can uh, you imagine no, being ahead. pulled over by a cop and in the middle, he's like, by the way, I'm not a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody comes to Yassi for help. And he's like, by the way, <laughs> so Yassi, it's my opening right, line. Opening I'm line. not because so I don't know why everyone, uh, everyone has always assumed that I am. And I don't like people who go around as Ki'ilu therapists, right. but they're not, and they don't say anything about it. You know, I, I'm not a therapist. Um, at best, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a drug counselor. It's called a KSAC, but that's a certification. It's not a license. Um, but that, it's not, not for today. We could talk about my credentials at a different time. However, um, yeah, so it, it's a concept that we've spoken about on a previous uh, podcast. Um, I just don't know if that one's been released or not, or if it was last season or this season, but the the idea is is that number one joy uh, it's the line i love pain is a difficult emotion to ignore joy is a difficult emotion to allow Shh. so what that means is is that we have a like a room in our uh brain and our mind and our soul and our emotions we have a a room a four-walled room and this room gets filled up and depending on <laughs> Go ahead. no no Go ahead. it's just are you sure it has four walls? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I just, yeah. because I felt like I was saying like, there's room, but no, it's a room. No, I'm happy. There's a room uh, in our, in our minds and in our hearts I'm happy. that holds space. We have been shown the okay. blueprints. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and in, in that room, in that that room gets filled up and it, there is a capacity to it it is a finite room hence the four walls and the ceiling and a floor it 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 get it could get filled up now what gets allowed into the room is the immediate loudest emotion so a a, a pain uh suffering hurt a uh, difficulty is a very loud emotion so when it comes you can't ignore it try ignoring pain you can ignore joy because you can um rationalize your way out of being happy you could say, yeah, but this, 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 and this. We don't usually do that with pain because it's too loud. Uh, joy needs to be allowed. You need to allow it into the room and you have to actually open the door for it. Pain kicks in the door and comes in uninvited. Uh, you don't, you know, you hurt yourself, someone hurts themselves or is hurt by something. They don't sit there and think to themselves, you know what I'm going to feel now? I'm going to allow pain, right? No one does that. It, you just feel it. Whereas joy, you could be like, I'm, I'm insisting to myself to be present right now and just enjoy this simcha and enjoy this, uh, this, uh, uh, happening that's going on around me or enjoy this. So uh, what do you call it? You'll find people showing up to a graduation of their eighth grade son of their whatever. I just was that one, uh, early, you know, of their whatever. And they're, they're going to be complaining about the parking. They're going to be complaining, right? Not many people are doing that by a funeral, right? And by a funeral, by the way, there's always like, 
you know, you have that line of cars that you got to, and you have to walk up a whole mountain. It's hot and it's this and that. No one's sitting there being like, it's really hot here. Why did they choose to do this here? Like, no, <laughs> that's it. Because every cemetery is going to be the same thing. None of them have air conditioning. Like it's not, it, it, right. It's not a thing that, that we, that we would do. And it would be superbly inappropriate to do. So when you're sitting, when someone's sitting Khalila at a, uh, um, at a funeral or at something, the pain is so focused that they are not being controlled by other idiosyncrasies, by other small things like some silly vendetta they have with this person, some, uh, uh, you know, um, offense that they took at some point. It just, it supersedes that. It's just bigger than that. What's happening is deeper than that. The pain is so deep that they choose to let it go. The problem is that we don't allow joy enough. And this is where I was going to not disagree with you, but I think just make a caveat on it, which is that just like, you know, and, and I really think we just let it go because there's other things that we can focus on. We're so afraid of being happy. People are so afraid of it. They really are. They're afraid. Like if, if you go over to a Jew and you're like, wow, things look like they're going really well for you. The guy will have a heart attack. He'll be like, no, 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 trust me. I, I put on a good show, but really there's a lot of things, you know, you don't know the year I've had. How could you judge me like that? Like I was just saying things are going well for you. Like it's a good thing. Like Hashem wants that for you too. He wants you to be happy. He wants things to go well, but, but we get so afraid of where, whereas you could go over to a person and be like, you know, is everything okay? You know, you don't like, like, thank you. Right. Thank you for seeing me in my pain. Thank you. And, and that's also beautiful. I'm not, I'm not taking that away. I'm just saying that we really are imbalanced with this. So we represent with the pain side because that room in our mind is so filled with the pain that we start taking it on as a trait of ours that we represent through pain and people can connect through pain a lot more, uh, you know, a lot, a lot better. Um, I, I just heard this line from, um, and I'm, I'm going to, change the line a little bit. I started this line. It's a famous line, but I, I happen to have heard it from Rashai Taub who said that, um, that the difference between spirituality and religion is religions for people who are afraid to go to hell. Spirituality are for people who's already, who have already been there. And it's a uh, shout out to my sister, Devari, who I think sent that, uh, sent that to us, uh, best, uh, case manager in all of Canada. Anyway, so she, um, so, but I want to change that around a little bit, which is that, um, pain is a such an easy way to connect to people, suffering and pain. And, and that's, and that's beautiful. That, that's the way we walk through pain is by connecting to people. I'm not taking that away. What I'm saying is, is the focus that we give pain on Tisha B'Av, if we can give joy 10% of that focus every other, all 364 other days of the year, we would, we would be doing great. Yeah. The problem is, is that we tend to allow, just to explain what you were saying, just to answer your question, we tend to allow the pain because it sort of takes us over. It, it, it's, it's involuntary. Um, whereas the joy is something we have to work on and not everyone's in the space that they want to work on the joy. Just as a small last point, in order to work on that joy, we have to acknowledge the pain. People think that being joyous is ignoring pain. It's not. It's acknowledging pain, acknowledging joy. It's just the acknowledgement that they exist in my life. Once I acknowledge it and I then the next step or the higher level of that is having gratitude for both of them, then I'm in a very, very good place. And, it, and it's a fight for everyone in their lives. I'm, I'm talking like I do this on a daily basis, <laughs> but no, I get to, I, 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 I'm just as imbalanced. All right, everybody. Uh, we're going to take a pause now from this episode. To be honest, I think that uh, I can use this pause for a minute uh, to Shabbat um being as heavy as it is. And here we are sitting with somebody who, you know, we talk about Tisha B'Av, how Hashem is crying over his children who are lost. That Hashem is crying over those who are lost amongst the nations. And if there's an organization that itself has dedicated to make Hashem cry less tears, to have the Abish to thrill, to have Hashem so proud of the fact that no one slips through the fingers, no one slips through the cracks, and that those who are literally swallowed up, Tinuk Shanishba swallowed up amongst the nations, 
That's what Yad Lachem is. They go in and they save those who are the furthest away to bring them back. So it is such an auspicious honor to have the Halig Reb Nisanel Gans with us today. How are we doing, Reb Nisanel? Thank you so much, Reb Ari and Biasi. I, I hope you're doing well. And it's a big success to be here. And, and thank you for you know, bringing up Yad Lachem. We really appreciate it. And of course, on this special day, when we're talking about the Har Beis Amigdash and the destruction of life, which people often forget what actually happened there. So many Yidin lost their lives. One of the things that Yad Lachem does, we, we, we help rebuild lives, right? We, we're, we're rescuing Jewish women and children. You're saving the fascists. On a day like of, 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 of Tisha B'Av, you want to do something positive and actually do the opposite of Sinas Chinam, do a Havas Chinam, showing that you love Klai, so you love Hashem's children. There's no better way than helping save a Jewish woman and child. Saveworld.org, that's the website. But when I'm, when I'm here and I have this opportunity to talk to all the listeners, I want to talk about something positive. You know, on Tisha B'Av, we always talk about the future. And we want to think about positivity, even within the sorrow that we're suffering from, especially if somebody's looking at late in the afternoon. So in only a few days, is Tu B'Av. Not to confuse the Tisha B'Av, called Tu B'Av. And there's a program that we started called Tu B'Av Together. It's a day on the 15th day of Av. It's coming up. It's coming Wednesday, August 2nd. And the night before, it's, it's, you know, we, by the Jews, Tu B'Av is a full day. It's Tu B'Av Together for Shadokim. We're going to have hundreds of thousands of Jews coming together to down for one another for Shadokim. I just want to say the quick story of how it happened. For many years, the women that we rescue, it's hard to find in Shadokim, but we would down for them. We would send people to Mekoy Mesagdashim. And as people heard that the Rabban were going to Daven, they wanted to give them their names as well. You know, Big Tzaddik were going to Daven, and Namukah, and Mekaisel, and Miron, gave them their names as well. And, but we always had a rule. The rule was we don't charge, it's free to give in names. That's our rule. It's always free to give in names. So, on Tuba, the day of school of for Shaduchim, for the last few years, you know, we would have a minion of Tamid Chachamim in Amukha, and people would give a name for Shaduchim and Baruch Hashem. It worked. But around seven years ago, I had this idea. Instead of Yad Achim simply davening for everyone on our, by ourselves, let's make Klali sort together. We went to Rabchaim Kanievsky, Zechon Levracha, and, you know, he said we put together eight kapit of Tilim that are recited on to Ba'av and Klaus all throughout the world get together. And we're having actually two programs on the website, tubeoftogether.org. We're going to put this on the bottom, the bottom of tubeoftogether.com. You'll see in the bottom of your screen where you can give a name for free. And we're actually having an event, Baruch Hashem Eschus, with Rabbi Yossi and Rabari only a few days on the night before on Tubav on Tuesday, August 1st, beginning at 7.30 p.m. New York time, a live event of Chizuk with Rabari Ari and Rabbi Yossi and some other Chash Rabbanim. And, and singers. And then the next day on Wednesday, August 2nd, Tubav itself, beginning at 10 a.m., also on tubavtogether.com. There'll be a live event with many Rabbanim leading to the hill throughout Klai Yisrael. It'll be an all-day event. And again, on this website, tubavtogether.com, you can give your name for Tila for absolutely free. There's no minimum donation required. And I, I'm serious. Please do so. You can download the Tehillim to be said. Art Scroll is generous. They provided the Tehillim. It's a special day. It's all for Shadokim. And again, on this solemn day of, of, of Tisha B'Av, I think it's important. People are suffering. People are thinking, what can they do? You can actually give themselves a name for Tefillah. Let's join together on Tuba of Together, tubaoftogether.com. We'll join together. And with that, hopefully, Hashem will give us Mashiach, Hashem will give us Shadokim, and everything will be good. Amen. Amen. Looking forward Amen. to seeing everybody there. This that you said, of that the pain just kicking open the door and coming in, that could be why people take a backseat to being involved. You know, you, you, you bring up a, a, a very real point, meaning like I had started this off saying, you know, when it comes to Sukkot, people are involved. When it comes to Pesach, people are involved. And you touched on a very important Nakuda, which is that, of course, they're involved by those because to show Simcha, you have to really push yourself to get there. So it needs your involvement to show the simcha of Sukkot or even to show the atonement, right? You're not supposed to be sad on Rosh Hashanah. So to, to get simcha in atonement or judgment by Rosh Hashanah, atonement by Yom Kippur or freedom of Pesach, whatever it may be, it needs my involvement because I'm supposed to then create joy. Whereas when pain comes in, so that's something that according to the human mind, it's coming in either way. And so therefore, I can almost just stand on the side because it's going to do its job. It's almost this automatic thing. But we then have to go and we have to do something for us to push ourselves to be able to make connections. And uh, I, I, I wanted to say that with this feeling of Tish above now, what should you be doing? Like we explained what you're feeling, but what should you be doing with that now? You know, what should you be doing with that feeling 
I know that there's pain. I know that there's sadness. And I know that I'm meant to make connections with other people. I think that this is the most practical, which is Lemaisa, when you are by a funeral or something sad, why do you go and think I should make amends? It's because you're able to take a totality of thought. See, at the funeral, you don't just think, I'm upset at that guy. You think, life is too short. Now, why are you thinking that? Well, because unfortunately, you're by a funeral, you're by a sad place. You're thinking that, really, what's it worth to have this small little thing when just it's so much bigger? It allows for you to take a step back and to see the bigger picture and to say that my little fight over here is so small in comparison to something so much bigger. This is called shikol hadas. This is called weighing out in your mind. When you come to a simcha or right. when you come- That's exactly what I was about to say. Uh, I'm like, this is a topic of shikol hadas. So exactly, when you yeah. come to a simcha or something along those lines- I'm already working hard enough, like Yelsey said, to show joy over here. And I already got my mind focused. I can't be bothered with that guy that I'm upset at because then you can't make a shikol hadas. But you want to hear an amazing thing. Uh, the Hale and Asivas Yosha brings that when a person goes, a ganav goes and steals, listen to this, a ganav goes and steals. So if he stole an ox and he slaughters it, he pays five. If he stole a set, a little shepsla, a little sheep, and steals it, he pays four, right? Tavachu machar is arbo chamisha. And the Gemara says, why is the set four? And it answers because the embarrassment that the Ganav had while he was stealing it because he had to put the set on his shoulders. The ox walks along, but the set, he had to put it on his shoulders. That embarrassment that he felt, he's already paid some of it. Says the Hale and the I want, I want you to appreciate this. He says, number one, this guy is stealing. What if he's stealing from the poorest Jew you've ever, your next door neighbor who has nothing but that set and everybody knows he only owns this one sheep. And then this guy comes and let's say the Ganav also knows that he only owes one sheep and he breaks in and he takes his one little sheep. More than that. When is he breaking in? It's a middle of the night. Nobody is seeing him. If anybody saw him, they would have stopped. He, he was successfully stole it. So nobody saw him. So what was he embarrassed? Who, who saw this to be embarrassed? Nobody. He was embarrassed in his own mind. He was only embarrassed thinking if somebody were to see wow. me right now. Oh man, how embarrassing would this wow. be? Shemayim says, we care about the Ganev. We care about his own psychology, psychological embarrassment enough that we take off a third of what he has to pay. We knock off payment. Frank the Rebbe, why? And his answer is so, so laser focused on what we're saying. He says, because Hashem is showing us, you take in shikol hadas, you take in weighing out everything. You want to punish this guy? You have to take in the fact, I get it, you stole from this. Terrible, terrible thing from this poor Jew, but Lamaisa. Did you also take into a fact that the Ganev was embarrassed in his own mind and therefore something should be taken off as well? No emotion over there. The whole thing is just a weighing out. And because of that, the halach is he pays less. Shikol Hadas means you have to take everything into account. Y'all see, you can have people who have been best friends for years, for decades, and then one of the friends does something a little bit wrong and that's it. They cut it out. If they only had shikol hadas, if they only said one second, we've been friends for years and years and years. How did you throw the whole thing away? And the answer is because we've been friends for years, he should have known better. But then shikol hadas says, all you did was emotion. If only you had a little logic over there, you'd realize you've been friends for years. Maybe go and talk to the person about it. I believe that Tisha B'Av is something that comes and demands of us a shikol hadas between everybody. I, uh, I, I can't agree more. And, and what do you need friends for? I'm saying there are brothers, families totally ripped apart by these things. They won't speak to each other anymore. Like they, their kids won't know each other. Like, they, they, I mean, people go through these, like th this is a, a, a tremendous thing. And a lot of times we do it for another person. It, it's, it, it, it's rough. I, I want to, I, you know, but 
I, I like that question and I like that idea and concept of what are we supposed to be doing with this emotion then? Um, as Jews, we do not sit well. We don't have a big shelf life of just sitting and allowing something. We need to do something. That's why we have organizations and gemachs for everything. If you ever want to say simultaneously, Ashrechem Yisrael, and laugh your head off, go look at a very large, dense, popu- densely populated Jewish community's gemach list. There is nothing you can think of. There is literally chalun. Literally, like in case your crockpot went off Friday, night, <laughs> Mom, you crock pot? don't yeah. have chalun. You're not going to eat cereal. You're not going to have. A, what do you call it? You're not. You, they have chalun for you. Every single idea is out there because we do not sit well. We only react, and we only know how to react. I believe Tish above is broken up beautifully, and this is. This is a Yasi Ben Shushan. So it could, I could be wrong. I'm not quoting this. This isn't a CVC. This isn't a what I, 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 this is totally me. So I could be wrong, but I think Tisha B'Av is broken up beautifully, beautifully. We're at night and in the morning, we're sitting in Kinnis and we're sitting there making space for that sadness and that hurt and that pain. And we're being told, no, no, I know you want to go do something about it. I know you want to go start a WhatsApp group for Ben Amal Haver. I know, I know, I know, I know, but you can't, you can't. Uh, you you want to go learn the halachas of it? That's adorable. You can't though. You can't. You know what? You want to know what halachas you can learn? The halachas are going to remind you that you're sitting here sad, and that there's no way out. And then chatzos comes, and we say, "Get up, get up, and what? God, I finally just got used to sitting sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the problem. You finally got comfortable in the sadness. Now it's time for you to get up and do something. Do something." Apply it. The day's not over yet. You still can't eat. You still can't go anywhere. You still can't work. You can't do anything yet. Get up and apply it. Get up and do something about it. Get up and call that person. Because now you can laugh. You can laugh after after Chad says. So call that person and laugh at yourselves. Laugh at yourself for how silly this has been. Laugh at at, at whatever you need to laugh at in order to build up that Benam L'Chaveri. There, I'm not going to get through this. There's one person I've ever met. I mean, ever. That really embodied this shikola das, that really embodied this balance to the point that I was suspect of it. And it's been one of the greatest haratas I've had, I think, my whole life is being uh, a suspect of it. Um, my friend who passed away earlier this year, um, Ben Chaifetz, he simultaneously valued both to the degree that I cannot even explain. Where if there was a Levaya going on, uh, he was, he was on the Chavar Kedusha and he was, but if there was a Levaya going on, he was, he was there. As a matter of fact, when he passed away, it was coming back from oh a, a Levaya. Um, he, 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 no matter what was happening, he was there. If it was a Simcha, he made his way to be there. No matter what, there was no such thing as a person just coming and sitting with him and, and just but he was perfect at this. If I came to him and I would sit with him often, if I was sitting with him and I said, you know, this would be, you know, cause I'm, I'm a theorist on things. I'm like, you know what organization would do great. You know what, what do you call it would do great because I suffered this week from this. He would first sit and really hear my pain, really hear what I went through. And then he would get up at that size immediately and be like, so when are we starting? I'll, I'll fund it. We'll, we'll work it out. Let's, when are we starting? I'm like, no, man. Just one of those things you talk about, you never do. He's like, no, 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 no. We got to do this. We got to do it. We got it. We got to go. He always had that perfect balance. And I learned so much from him on this. And one of the things that I learned is that when he was sitting in sadness, he would just sit. Now, Ben was not a quiet guy by any stretch of the imagination, but he understood the idea of just sitting in it. And when the sadness, and when it came time that the sadness was felt, he would jump up and immediately start to do something about it. And I think that's what we're supposed to be doing to Shabbat, is that we value that first part of sitting in it, really sitting in it, understanding it, have that part of the shikul. And then when it's time to get up, get up. Do something on Tisha B'Av. Do something that day 
that leads. Now, there are a lot of people who are going to, who are going to say, well, you know, yeah, but what about the person who doesn't want to talk to me? What about the person who's impossible to talk to, right? My mother's a narcissist, right? Everyone's mother's a narcissist. My mother's a narcissist. This one's a narcissist. Yeah. He, okay. And so you're saying everyone else in your life you have it going with, except for that person. So that person's too difficult for you this year, Tisha B'Av. I'm fine with that. That person is not what's holding back Mashiach. That not your, not your broken relationship with that person, not your broken relationship with the person who, who Khalila killed someone you know. That's not the one. It's the one that's silly. It's the one that you feel slightly taken advantage of. You made up a story in your head about what they meant and what they felt when they said that thing to you. It's that person. And if we can fix with those people, that's our Bainan Machavere operation. That's our Bainan Machavere Avoida right now. Um, so again, yeah, we sit in it and then we get up and we do something. Beautiful. So um, this has been our thoughts, um, I guess, for this year. Tish above, hopefully we'll never have to do um, a Tish above, uh, you know, talk ever again. And Bezat Hashem. Episode again, yeah. I really, really believe Mashiach is coming this year. Uh, you know, our love for Eretz Yisrael, our love for each other, our love for Hashem should be increased enough that Bezat Hashem, this time next year, we're all together in Eretz Yisrael. In Yerushalayim, with Mashiach, with the third bet to Mikdash, Amen. 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 Amen.